Welcome sa ating channel. We have already featured a lot of PC builds. 5000 series, 5800X PC builds. Pero this time, I want you guys to have a new update. How will this new processor or latest processor from AMD performs as of June 2021? Then since pandemic ngayon, there are things na hindi natin ginawa before like configurations na 5800X with 6700XT. Given that pag hindi po pandemic, ang pricing ng 6800XT is really ideal for 5800X. Pero this time, syempre dahil medyo nagmahal ang processors and video cards, I think 6700XT is now ideal for a Ryzen 7 processor and we can also do that especially if the purpose of the build is for production and into gaming. Yan po yung alamin natin together with this B550 Plus Tough Gaming. Is it a good enough motherboard to handle an 8-core AMD processor? And ZXT case, are they losing the hype? Let's find out the answers with this experimental PC build featuring AMD 5800X. For more videos like this, and experiment PC builds, feel free to subscribe. This video is brought to you by SCDKey, the best website that you may visit in terms of uh, very affordable deals and best offer para sa application softwares, games, and yes, operating system. And there you are, you may check the Windows 10 Pro and by using our promo code, ma avail mo lang siya ng around $14.95 or $700 plus pesos. That's it mga kaibigan. Check the description below. May mga links po tayo dyan to go directly sa kanilang website. Before we will start, uh, papakita ko muna sa inyo yung time lapse and uh, take note that this is an experimental PC build. Ibig sabihin this is not the usual thing that we do. But given the situation right now na pandemic, we will do some kind of configurations na kahit paano medyo makakatipid tayo or if we are into budget at least we can try this na hindi naman mako-compromise yung performance. We will find out if this case is really ideal or can be considered given the form, given the design. Same with the 5800X. Is that 8-core processor can be overclocked to have more performance, to have more juice? Is the PBO enough? And lastly, that VRM. Is that good enough power delivery? Let's find out and check this time-lapse video.
There you have the gaming benchmark. We have here the 6700XT video card with axial fans that is uh, redesigned to deliver better cooling system or cooling implementation from ASUS together with that backplate na merong clearance. Napaka important factor po nun, Yung surface area na makakover ng cold air. Kasi heat sink is just a heat sink. It's just a passive component that will help pagdating sa cooling system. How is it designed? And that is what uh, ASUS made when they redesigned this stuff. Because you remember, we featured, I think, hindi ko na-feature dito sa ating channel. Pero back then, ASUS made a big time failure pagdating sa kanilang tough variant. I think that was uh, with 5700XT. Uh, I'm sorry, ASUS, pero I just want to uh, at least uh, share them na merong pagkakamali with the first variant of 5700XT. And sobrang nadala sila doon, they released the EVO variant. And now we have here a better and uh, yes, I cannot say anything anymore pagdating sa kanilang 6700XT. Now, uh, the benchmark as you can see, yung temperature, not only the FPS, makikita nyo na napaka-decent ng kanyang temperature even na nakalagay siya sa isang restricted chassis na NZXT H510 Elite. Let's talk about that more later. Going to the 5800X, look at what we did. We overclocked the processor, manually overclocked, just to see if there will be a significant difference pagdating sa rendering over dun sa PBO. Nakita natin dito that the PBO is now so aggressive that I think going for a manual overclocking is not anymore that ideal as before. Look at the uh, seconds difference. Like what I say sa mga previous videos, na if we will try to scale yung time frame sa 8 hours, sa 10 hours, like what is the normal uh, time frame pagdating sa mga project uh, rendering ng mga architects and engineers, is still, that is a very minimal uh, difference or advantage to exert a lot of effort pagdating sa trial and error ng manual overclocking. PBO is already good enough. It's not any more significant if you will be going to a manual overclocking. Besides, it's multiple times proven din dito sa ating channel that having the processor manually overclock if you are into gaming, there will be no or sometimes even lower FPS pa nga over dun sa PBO. Since we have a lot of topics dito sa video na to, let's move forward why on earth I combine 5800X and 6700XT. Unang-una, video card is overpriced. You can avail 6700XT at a 50K. You can avail 6800XT at almost 70K. And it's still not much overpriced as those higher variants. 6800XT kung hindi lang pandemic, that is 30K lower. 6700XT, kung hindi lang din pandemic, that is 20K lower. So, it's like you save 10K. Maybe you settle down with a lower variant video card, pero at least, you still have a decent video card for a 5800X. Going lower than 6700XT, dun naman na ako medyo tagilid or mapapaisip na, oh, it's not any more recommended. If you have that kind of budget pala, then just settle down with a 5600X. Pero problem with this is, how about if you are into production? So yun po yung reason kung bakit 5800X and 6700XT. What if 
you are a gamer, but you are also into production. 5600X is good, pero 6 cores is not enough for a heavy uh, rendering task like Revit, like Blender 3D that we use. We all know that when you do something pagdating sa production, you will not be just using your processor for rendering. You will be also using your processor for multitasking jobs. You will be opening Blender, you will be opening uh, um, Google Chrome browsers, uh, images, chunk of uh, files to complete that rendering process. And that is the reason why it's better to settle down with an 8-core over just a 6-core. Yes, 5600X is good if you are just into purely gaming, pero if you are into rendering as well, better settle down with your 5800X and decent video card that is at least 6700XT. Since most of the motherboard manufacturers nowadays have already looked closely pagdating sa mga VRM cooling implementations. Unlike before that they are just overlooking this part. And there, maraming pumutok na mga benchmark para naging standard that having a better VRM is a better motherboard. And doon na pumapasok yung naging too much hype ng VRM. This is way contradicting my previous videos. Pero it's 2021. It's not anymore 2020 or 2019. Pero it leads to some kind of misconceptions dahil as of 2021, motherboard manufacturers overlook naman yung features. And that is what uh, this tough B550 Plus gave to us. Yung AI noise cancelling. Most of us during this pandemic is uh, home-based. Lahat po is uh, through conference hall, through Zoom meeting. So having an AI noise cancelling feature sa isang motherboard na pwede mong uh, temporarily take advantage while waiting for the funds to buy a decent headset. Now, what's the point why I'm stating this? Because uh, with the case, like for example, I have a Olus uh, motherboard. I am a personal user of Gigabyte. Ang dami ko ng video dito sa ating channel about Gigabyte. Pero ito yung nangyayari. They focus pagdating sa hardware, pero they don't do much improvement pagdating sa software, pagdating sa BIOS. Still, it's the same old... Uh, uh, not so good. Kumbaga, there's an improvement pero not as uh, kumbaga, as much as what ASUS delivered to us by this year 2020 to 2021. And I'm so thankful that NZXT also cooperated with us. Now, what's my finding with their case? Well, it's a good case. It's not really bad. Nahandle niyo yung 5800X with the 6700XT. Pero still, NZXT, I'm wishing na sana you will release a better implementation ng cooling pagdating sa intake for best uh, performance. Kasi as of 2021, AMD or this uh, PBO and other uh, boost pagdating sa performance are very dependent pagdating sa cooling system. Well, thank you for uh, trusting me to have your chassis and uh, to feature this uh, sa ating channel. Pero ito yung masasabi ko. Unang-una, NZXT is good if you have a very good ambient temperature. Pero if you are in a situation or a room na climate controlled and summertime, well, good luck. Lalong-lalong na kung maabot ka ng 30 to 40 degrees Celsius yung room temperature mo. NZXT is not for you. Pero this is the signature of NZXT. And I doubt that they will change this design na minimalist front panel. So, the only request na masasabi ko is try to find ways na magkakaroon ng aggressive intake kahit na i-retain ninyo yung minimalist front panel. I am aware for the negative pressure uh, airflow pero still kulang pa rin po siya. As you look at the benchmark, nakita nyo naman siguro. We have here NZXT fans. We also tried to compare this chassis with other chassis out there. Same fans configuration, same components inside, and nakita nyo po dyan na medyo inferior siya pagdating sa ranking. Dahil nga po sa kanyang design. Pero I'm not saying that this is a crappy chassis. It's just that we did the benchmark at the worst case temperature ng inyong room that is around 30 plus degrees Celsius ambient temperature. Pero if you are at a room temperature or naka-aircon kayo, well, NZXT is for you.
Pero since you will settle down with NZXT, syempre, you will also settle down with NZXT cooling system. So dito naman ngayon bumawi. Kaya when you look at the benchmark ng CPU, maganda pa rin siya kasi that is an Asetek pump. Very prominent nila silang pump, kumbaga very good reputation na sila. So we are expecting na that uh, cooling system of NZXT talaga ang mag uh, neutralize yung hindi ganun ka-friendly pagdating sa AMD na design ng chassis. So, hope you like our pandemic experimental PC build. For more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and comment down below kung gusto nyo pang mag-experiment tayo ng mga hindi talaga usual na configuration. Please consider that when I build this, it is pandemic, maraming factor like overpriced, shortage, and yes, lastly, for you guys to have the uh, result or para ma-picture out nyo if you will settle down with this kind of setup. So that's it guys and thank you so much.